Uh, hello, everybody. Welcome to the stream. Uh, we're doing a Maneko today. It's been a long time coming, but I promise it'll be worth the wait. Uh... When we last left our heroes... Uh, heroes? Heroes? heroes. Question mark? Heroes. <laughs> Question mark. When we last yeah. left these awful people... But yeah, yeah. Uh, bunch people, of people got shot. Some people were killed by mistake. Some people mm -hmm. got killed on purpose. You know. So, yeah. uh, I think so. I, I need to point out a little bit of some funny irony about this. Um, so we, we, the reason why, uh, the re well, I'm not going to give the explicit reason why we didn't have Umineko for two for two weeks. I think I mentioned it pretty briefly. Uh, various life events happened, and someone who in Khan couldn't make it. Um, and I think the funnier thing is like literally about. Five minutes for about before we were supposed to go on, Khan couldn't make it. Mm -hmm. So uh, we will be uh, for completely unrelated reasons. So despite yeah. this, despite the lack of availability, uh, it's been two weeks and we kind of got to get back to it a little bit. So yeah, I was thinking of posting that VTuber no sound again with uh, <laughs> when Khan could be ready or something, but I thought that was too mean. I <laughs> wouldn't do that. Yeah. Khan, I am sending you a virtual hug from the past. Whenever also, a lot of, yeah, lots of virtual hugs. It's unfortunate. Mm -hmm. uh, All of not the a lot of hugs. not a lot of it's inner control. Uh, but anyways, yeah, no, uh, uh, no more Sonic content ever. <laughs> no more Sonic yeah. content ever. We're not gonna play nah. Sonic Dreams Collection. Nah, nah, we're doing Sonic, Sonic Heroes at some point. Shot. Don't worry. Yeah, Sonic Heroes, Team Turkey, Chaotic. Uh, another Sonic Wait, game I haven't Sonic actually, I've, the I've not Dreams actually finished. even possible to stream on Twitch? It is, no. but I don't want to. <laughs> Based. We don't want that Fucking one fetish. Hmm. My uh, brother in Christ said Sonic Dream Collections, which one? Uh, but yeah. Uh, Anyways, without further ado. Yeah, no more, no more fucking around, no more pussyfooting. Or the concept of that. HA! <laughs> That that just that just means like it means like step caps cat stepping around an issue. Yeah, I know. Uh huh. Oh, sure. Else. Nobody forget. Everybody yeah. forgets the actual the actual usage of the word pussy. Yeah, pussy just, amulus. Just like the word bitch. Same thing. Mm -hmm. It is a female, female dog, dog in heat. Oh. No, specifically D a horny female dog. Dio. Pussy Dio. GF and Bitchy. Pussy GF and Bitchy. Mm -hmm. My OG. Uh, I will say, uh, big props to uh, to B, who finally has proper internet <laughs> and isn't using, oh, yeah. 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 isn't using, yeah. isn't using your Dying phone as a hotspot. Oh, oh my god! Finally. Oh, oh wait, did everybody else crash? No. What? No. no. Oh, okay. Yeah, right. I, I know you mentioned something about mm. phone as a hotspot. Yeah, I just crashed the moment that Shelly said female dog and heat. <laughs> That'll do it. Discus so Discord are you saying that friend? your computer acted like a female horny dog in heat? Oh god. Uh, my my Discord committed on a lie for a bit there. Uh, All other right. than that, uh, hopefully, uh, so tomorrow I'm getting my I'm getting my my, my nice high end higher ender power supply shoved into this thing, which will hopefully fix some of the issues I've been having stream wise. I hope. Fortunately, More uh. Weapon. Fortunately, Umineko is not as taxing, so I think we'll be fine. Uh, but yeah, enough nonsense. Uh, also, uh, hey. uh, you know what? Actually, no, I'm not even going to say. Do we have a sponsor for today, B? We got to make one up. Uh, no, we have not had a sponsor for a hot minute. Uh, this episode of Umineko is sponsored by Sonic the Hedgehog holding it, holding down the fort for two consecutive weeks. Much He's appreciated. Sponsored <laughs> by Dr. O for Oh Boy. <laughs> Oh dear. <laughs> and this episode is all sponsored by a test. What's this supposed to be? At this time of night? Starting now. Battler yelled wildly into the receiver. When he said, at this time of night, Jordan Jessica took turn to look. According to the clock, it was past midnight. It might be a normal time to be told to brush their teeth and go to bed, but he couldn't understand what this test thing was all about. Uh, okay, I'll hand it over. Here, George Anarchy. It's my dad. Hello? Uh, this is George speaking. Oh, 
Oh no, I left for 10 minutes for the laundromat. Oh, uh. <laughs> ah, hey, George Gun. <laughs> I mean, this actually fits pretty well. <laughs> yeah, actually, pretty good. Yeah. Yeah, 35. Got a call so late. You weren't sleeping already, were you? You're a small silly chatting way. Uh, pretty much. Maria Chan is sleeping. Oh, wait. Looks like she uh, just woke up. Uh, what do you want to talk about? Balakin said something about a test of sort. Oh, yeah. That can be such a pain sometimes. He suddenly came down from his room. Bunch of stuff happened, and by the end, he was talking about which grandchild would make the best successor. But, is it Uncle Krause's successor? He says the father is someone up to the job. So he's gonna skip us adults and choose one of you grandkids instead. It's all so sudden, we're really freaking out here. <laughs> and the others are all arguing about it across the room. I bet you, I bet you can hear Anarchy shrieking in the background, huh? <laughs> uh, uh, is, that, is that so? If that's what Grandfather says, then there's no way around it. I guess. In that case, what should we do? He says he wants to call you out, one by one, starting with Jessica Chan. Oh, wait a sec. Mm -hmm. Okay, you still there? Looks like you and Jessica Chan will be first up to bed. He wants Jessica Chan to go to the parlor in the mansion. You're supposed to go out in front of the chapel. If it's so sudden, I... I hardly feel ready. Uh, well, what sort of test is it? Looks like Dad made some kind of crazy quiz. Some weird questions about what it means to be the head. Of course, a few things off about this seemed off to George. But Verkinza was famous for doing radical things on a whim. Even the strange test seemed plausible once he heard. He had heard that it was a sudden idea of Kinza's. But even so, if he wanted to test them one by one, why wouldn't he call them up one by one? They could have just had everyone wait in some reception room to be called in one at a time. Why would two people be called to different places at, at the same time? The plan didn't seem to make sense, and George felt he like he was missing something. Still, I wonder why he wanted to meet you in front of the chapel of all places. He expects a lot from you. I think he wants to talk to you alone. I'm not sure what about. Grandfather wants to talk to me? That's right. I wonder what he's got to say. Um, me, you're the most talented of his grandkids. You probably got something to tell you in particular, right? <laughs> anyway, that's what he said. Get over there right away. I'm supposed to go to the chapel too. So let's get this over with. Or we're both gonna catch colors. I see. Uh, okay. Then I'll head towards the front of the chapel. And Jessica Chan will go to the parlor. Uh, sure. 
I'll see you in a bit then. What sort of test or private conversation could Kinzo possibly want to have at this time of night? Then again, it's a well-known fact that Kinzo doesn't have long to live. It wouldn't be so strange if he wanted to give out give some sort of will to each of his descendants individually. Inside George's mind, the faint feeling that something was wrong was replaced by a desire to meet Kinzo directly and hear about this in more detail. George set down the receiver and quickly explained to the others. It's as you heard. Grandfather says he wants to give us all some kind of test. After hiding in a study all these years, he suddenly decides to give us this test late at night. Damn that old geezer. What is he thinking? It seems our parents feel the same way. It sounds as though they're, they're very worked up about it. Well, I'm not getting worked up about it will change grandfather's mind. Uh, exactly. Well, we might as well accept it. Uh, it's grandfather's orders, after all. Uh, grandfather's order. Uh, let's obey it. The start Jessica Chan and I are being called out. I'm going to a chapel. Jessica Chan's supposed to go in the parlor in the mansion. What about Maria and me? I think they'll contact you later. Right here. Mm -hmm. I mean, like this. What can it be? What kind of test is it? A quiz? <sighs> puzzle? I'm really good at wasn't cheap puzzles. Mm -hmm. Maria, who was now fully awake, seemed to be very excited about this unexpected midnight test. Then we'll just hang we'll just hang out here. Yeah. Okay, I'm going. It sounds like they're already waiting for us. So he's making one of his grandkids the successor? It sounds great to me. Now I can let one of you guys deal with it. I'm gonna become successor! I wanna do it! <laughs> Having Maria as a successor wouldn't be so bad. Bye. Uh, see you later. Rudolph put down the receiver and stood up. a very long time to stand up. No, are you there? Uh, I typed seconds in live Lin on and all. Apologies, really just we're just bringing up the pace for just a moment. Look at that handsome man standing there dignantly. Boy, howdy. <laughs> oh, howdy indeed. Darn tootin'. Man, look at that handkerchief in that pocket. Yeah. Look, look at that white tie and the black shirt. Mm -mm -mm. Peek his eyes. It's the same color as Battler's hair. Because it's, it's got that auburn red. <laughs> oh. Oh. The lore. Mm. Probably disconnected on, on the phone and going to reconnect. Yeah. Again, again, PC. You see, he can't oh. method act anymore because he's not on the phone. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 
Guess I'm going to the spot in front of the chapel. <laughs> it's damn cold out there. Go to sun. Have some coffee waiting for me when I get back, will you? Next to Rudolph, Goda was lying face up. His face was covered by a crossword puzzle book. However, its pages were stained with blood. He didn't need to move the book to imagine how he had met his pitiful end. How was it? A nice script, don't you think? Yep. <laughs> we should be thanking Dad. If we just say it was him being fickle, no one's gonna doubt us. <laughs> <laughs> then let's split up. I'll take care of Jessica John. And you take care of George Gunn. You got it. Let's get this over with quickly so we can relax and have some coffee. A nice relaxing cup of coffee. There won't be any problems, yes. No sudden pangs of conscience. Kyrie smiled coldly. It probably would have been safer to call them out one by one and finish them off together. However, Kyrie had chosen to have her husband work separately. She wanted to measure Rudolph's resolve. If she was the only one who got her hands dirty and Rudolph just watched, his heart wouldn't be as dedicated to this venture. By having him dirty his own hands, she could make him truly determined to see this thing through. Kiri understood this sort of mind game better than anyone else. Rudolph reflexively averted his gaze from the cold glint in her eyes, but then he mm. shrugged and answered her question. Of course. We have a billion yen right now on this. And I'm a man. I'm not going to miss a chance that'll never come again in my lifetime. I expect no less of you, Rudolph-san. I love people who seize chances when they come. That's why I fell in love with you. Th thanks. I'm glad. Rudolph-san. What? Stay like that. Always, okay? Uh, mm, what did you say? You always remain the same Rudolph song that I love. Okay? Of course. When have I ever let you down? <laughs> You should be worrying more about what kind of champagne we'll use to toast our victory. I'll do that. And take care now. If you really treasure Battler Kun, don't kill George Kun in front of the chapel, okay? It'll be a pain if he finds the body. Yeah, no. I'll lure him away somehow. We'll be outside and it's raining. Should be some way to do it. And you aren't some villain in an old western, got it? Don't grant don't grant any last requests or take down any final messages, okay? Kyrie lifted up her gun again and ran, up, ran, the, and ran the lever to eject the casing from the round she had killed Goda with.
dear. 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 <laughs> Ava was holding Hideyoshi's body and crying. She hadn't been shot at all. The bullet had grazed her head and missed. She hadn't been playing dead. She really thought that she'd been shot. When Kyrie's gun spat fire, Ava felt something fierce skim past her head, before feeling lightheaded and fainting. Then she had awoken in the now silent room of the goal. The remains of her beloved husband lay beside her, as well as Kraus, Natsuhi, and Rosa's corpses. It was a room of death and piled up bodies. When she had cried all she could all she could when she had cried all she could over Hideyoshi's body, she realized that she still had something she needed to do. George is in danger. George! George! They're trying to use the bomb to blow up everything. To bury this whole island with an explosion accident. Of course. As Ava had expected. Which on the clock was set to the right, which meant that it was active. Ava moved to flip it to the left and stopped. That's right. As long as the switch points to the right, everything that happens will disappear in this night of illusions. Yes, this is an illusion. No matter what happens tonight, everything will become muddled and hidden away. They're probably going to kill everyone else, too. This ha that has to be it, I'm sure of it. I took the table with the box of bullets. We saw signs that they had roughly grabbed a bunch of bullets before leaving. It clearly showed that they planned to use that many bullets. I have to fight. I've only just to protect the just the life of my precious son. The gun that I dropped and I was shot and stuck to the stuck with the lever open. No matter how hard I pull, it won't open any further and it won't close again. Apparently, the board has gotten jammed, breaking it. It's just as scary as I said. Running a bullet is tough if you aren't used to it. Please. Please, dear. Lend me your strength. Lend me your strength. So that I can protect George. In Hideyoshi's hand was Krauss's gun, which he had been trying to pick up. Eva took it, prayed to her husband one more time, and tugged on the lever handle. Uh. With a light metallic sound, the golden casing spun through the air and bounced off the ground. When she timidly tried to push the lever back, Stem returned to his original place without any resistance. There was another metallic clang. It was the sound of a new bullet being loaded. I figured it'd be something like this. Someone scheming to show me a game that disgusted me the most. Just to mock me. In the game so far, various people have been suspected of being the culprit or an accomplice. The only difference now is that Rudolf and Kyrie were those suspects. However, to Angie, that was the most infuriating plot twist possible. <sighs> Even Leon was full of painful thoughts. Solving the epitaph was supposed to be the only miracle that could lead to a game without a single victim. But, ironically, the tragedy hadn't been averted even so. Does this mean we're, we aren't allowed to have a future where we all happily return from this island alive? Even if the epitaph is miraculously solved before the crime occurs? 
miracle certainly will not occur. Those words which I had heard in one of the fragments Burkensil had shown me raced through my mind. Burkensil, son. You showed me how wonderful my world was. I don't want to believe that you created this tale just to hurt Angie. By now, even I realize you're the game master here. Please tell me. Why are you showing us this game? Of course, no one answered Leon's muttered question. The game created to mock Angie continued emotionlessly. With more terrible twists that didn't betray anyone's expectations anymore. Ooh. Ha! Show whatever terrible game you like! You're trying to say that this is one of the endless possibilities inside the cat box, right? Just do whatever you want! I won't let something like this get to me! Someday, I'll find out the truth of what happened on October 5th, 1986! After meeting Kyrie in the parlor, Jessica was told that the test would be held in the dining hall, and she followed Kyrie there. Aunt Kyrie, there's no one here. He'll be here soon. Sit over there. <clears throat> Jessica sat in the chair she had been offered, looking nervous and agitated. Kiri was far calmer than the two of them. Kiri closed the door behind her, revealing the gun that rested behind it. Jessica was facing other way, so she saw nothing. Did you hear anything about this, Aunt Kiri? Like, what kind of test this is? Yes. It'll be over soon. I sure hope so. As she complained, Jessica turned her head around, and the tip of her nose bumped into cold metal. Huh? Ah, ah, Uncle Rudolph. What, what are you doing? <laughs> I guess shooting people in the back just isn't for me after all. Hey, hey, that, that was dangerous. What on earth are you doing? Come on, why else would someone point a gun and pull the trigger? Rudolph reloaded rapidly and pulled the trigger again, without any sign of hesitation. The sound of gunfire, th the, sound of th the sound of gunfire thudded through the rain. Jordan grabbed at his side and fell to his knees. <laughs> That's weird. I guess it really does shoot low. This gun's really got it bad. <laughs> Somebody help me, Uncle Rudolph is. George started stumbling away, still clutching at his sides. His voice as he called for help was weak and thin. In comparison, Rudolph, who stood behind him, looked perfectly calm as he fiddled with his gun and checked his sights. It hurts. It hurts. <laughs> <laughs> it felt to George as though something had been gouged into his side. It was so painful that he could barely stand and walk. He leaned against the trunk of a tree. After he crouched down trying to cover his wound, he was no longer able to stand back up. George didn't have a clue what was going on. However, he had felt as though something was wrong this whole time. Of course it was strange that he'd be called out alone to a place like this, at a time like this. 
And yet, how could he have known that something was wrong? After all, his own uncle had told him that his grandfather was asking him to join the family conference. How could he have even suspected? Sorry about this, George Coon. It hurts, doesn't it? If I knew it had come to this, I would have been kinder to blow out your brains from behind. I thought it'd be too cruel to finish you off before you knew what hit you. But it looks like I got it backwards. Uh, okay, why? Well, Uncle Ferdinand. Why would you, my kind uncle, do this? Forget about this. By tomorrow night, all of it won't have happened. With a quick use of the lever handle, he loaded another bullet. The casing of the bullet that had pierced George's side fell heartlessly, heartlessly in front of him. Everyone's gonna die in a sudden unfortunate accident. Till that moment, we'll all be a big, happy family. That's how it's gonna be. That's how it's gonna be, so don't worry about this. Forget it all. Of course, George didn't have a clue what Rudolph was talking about. All he knew was that Rudolph wanted to kill him. And then he showed no trace of hesitation. His image of Rudolph as the ideal cool, joke-loving adult didn't match up with the man standing in front of him, holding a gun. No, maybe this feels wrong because it fits him too well. He has that same smile. As though he's about to tell some hilarious joke. What? Maybe he has the same smile as though he's about to tell some hilarious joke, but he has pointing a gun at me. Why? Why would the kind of funny Uncle Rudolph do this? I mean, but I think it's you. It made him feel unimaginably sad. His tears flowed from his eyes. Ah, uh, Rudolph, Uncle Rudolph, I, I admire you so much. Haven't I always told you, George Coon? Make sure you don't end up as an adult like me. Now, you see why. In the next world, make learning how to spot villains your first priority. I know you can do it. After all, it's just another kind of studying. <laughs> He bit down the pain in his side. The last of his strength, George threw his whole body into a roundhouse kick. At the same time, fire spat from Rudolph's gun. The bullet pierced George's chest. George spun around as, as he fell amidst uh, an outpouring of blood. He moaned wordlessly, clenching his blood-stained teeth. A frigid gun was pressed harshly against his temple. So long. Go become a great man in the next world. Don't get blinded by money like me. I can't believe that my uncle would kill for money. <laughs> You're so innocent. People can kill. Over money. <laughs> the ruthless trigger forestalled any further question. 
George's hands, which had been covering his wound, dropped lifelessly. The Rudolph saw the last glimmer of life leave him. He sighed deeply and looked tired. <laughs> that was easier than I thought. Riddle looked up into the dark, rainy sky, the raindrops hitting him full in the face, and laughed with an indescribable expression, his tongue hanging out. I thought my conscience would bug me more. <laughs> now that it's over, it was pretty easy. <laughs> Rudolph laughed. Probably just the thing Kyrie had, helped, had hoped for. It took considerable efforts to kill George. He may have been merciless, but the last traces of consciousness in Rudolph's heart had probably slowed him down. However, now that he had killed someone with his own hands, a turning point that few people ever reach, Rudolph had finally awakened. Now, he finally understood. It's... no, see. It's just like squeezing dough out of a bunch of morons. The same old game of musical chairs. If there's a pile of money in front of you, the first one to reach it wins. The slow ones just get kicked down to hell. <laughs> Haven't I driven dozens of poor fools into debt with my earlier swindles? Several of those probably ended up bankrupt and some of those might have hanged themselves. And I always laughed like it was none of my business. And that's all there is to it. The only difference is that for the first time, I've dealt the final blow with my own hands. Thanks, Kyrie. You're always the best at cutting away my naivety. <laughs> Rudolph's evil laugh rang out. The laugh was so purely evil it was almost soothing. Hypocritical evil that still contains some pangs of consciousness is far more repulsive than blood. Repulsive, repulsive to behold. Conscience. Fuck. If a man's committed to doing great evil anyway, how much more pleasant and gallant is it when he, hold, when he is wholly devoted to his goal? In that sense, Rudolph's evil smile and laugh. For pleasant and gallant, indeed. Which means, the brutal, bloody stage of the dining hall must have been soothing as well. thud, a crack, a squish. A strange mixture of these sounds kept repeating over and over at the same tempo. Each time a red splash landed on the tablecloth dangling nearby. Jessica-chan, can you hear me? Kyrie asked this with the sort of smile any aunt might make to her niece. However, Jessica didn't answer. There was nothing particularly surprising about this. After all, by now, her nose had been broken, her eyes had been smashed, her teeth had been knocked out, and not only her nose, but her entire face is now hardly recognizable as a face. Just a lump of bloody flesh. 
Kyrie finally stopped her task of repeatedly smashing Jessica's face with the stock of her gun. Still sitting on top of Jessica, she tossed her gun to the side, pulled the compact out of her pocket, and looked at her own face in the mirror. Then, finally, she realized that her face was covered by speckles of, flesh blo of fresh blood. How terrible. And these clothes will have to go, too. <laughs> With a muffled laugh, Kyrie shakily rose to her feet. Jessica wasn't moving anymore. She had been convulsing a bit until a second ago. But now, she was as still as a stone. <sighs> Smashing a woman's face. There's nothing new to your aunt, okay? I'm sorry about that. If you hadn't resisted, I could have given you a much cleaner death. Here I pulled the tablecloth off and used like a towel to wipe the blood from her oil from all over her body. However, instead of taking the blood off, it just smeared it around. Nothing to remove the stench of blood and death that covered her. When she got tired of rubbing the tablecloth against the blood, Kyria walked over to the extension line telephone in the corner of the room. Then she dialed the number for the cousin room in the guest house. Hello? It's me. It's your turn now, Batlerkin. Go to the spot in front of the chapel, please. Yes, that's right. I haven't been given any instructions for Maria-chan. Have her wait there. <laughs> yes, keep your wits about you. I'm rooting for you to be chosen as a successor, Batlerkin. With the same smile as usual on the paltry and the, and the partly wiped splash, splashes of blood still covering her face, Kyrie finished her call to Battler. When she sat down the receiver, there was a small knock and Rudolph came back into the room. Hey, you look like shit. <laughs> Jessica John has better reflexes than I gave her credit for. I didn't think she'd be able to fight back from a situation like that. It's a bit of a shame she had to end up looking like this. Ugh. What a waste of a good Nazi-esque woman. And how about your end? Did it give you much trouble? No problems there. Plain and simple. When Kyrie heard Rudolph's instant response, she favored him with an evil smile. Yes, the man she loved was the sort who could do it if he tried, without letting cheap emotions get in the way. I love you, rudolph son. I wouldn't have it any other way. It's hard to imagine an easier job to net you a billion yen. It's like Dad always said. In the life of every man, there comes one day when he has to be willing to kill. In other words, always be determined to survive, even if you have to kill to do it. That's my favorite line of his. What's next? My rifle is hungry for blood. You got a big job coming up. Convincing Batlerkin. Oh, that's right. That'll be a pain. Hope I don't have to end it by pulling the trigger. I've really enjoyed. 
Life is a three-person family with Angie. But if you really want Batlerkin to join in on that, give it your best. Sure. I'll make sure we don't have any complaints from him. Don't worry, I've worked out a scenario to trick him good. Good luck. Even I hope Angie's beloved big brother doesn't get caught up in the explosion accident. I know. Then I'll head back to the chapel. Rudolph san. Why? If you can't convince Batlerkun. Hmm. I know, I know. If that happens, bang. Batlerkun is independent enough that he left the family out of protest when I married you, remember? If you can only convince him halfway, and if things get nasty later on, he'll prove fatal to us. I know. Believe in me. And if... I decide that Batlerkin is growing suspicious. I'll kill him myself. He's not my kid after all. Yeah. I know. So... Promise me one thing, Kyrie. What's that? If I can trick Battler and the three of us make it off this island... If that happens, what? Hmm... Never say that Battler isn't your kid again. After all, you're his mother. Please. Sure, I promise. Kyrie shrugged and answered as she loaded bullets. And you go to the chapel. I'll wait until Batlerkin has left and clean up everything inside the guest house. Are you sure you'll be okay doing that alone? That's my line. Hmm. Bella left the guest house under an umbrella. He had been called to the area in front of the chapel, just like George had been. Not even 30 minutes have passed since the time George and Jessica had been called out. Apparently this test didn't last too long. Damn geezer. First they ever come out, not even for lunch. And then you show up in the middle of the night with the test. <laughs> all that living as a shut-in's got his sense of day and night all backwards. Complaining all the way, Battler strolled off into the rain. Almost immediately he was swallowed up by the darkness of the Rose Garden and passed out of sight. And then... Kyrie could be seen coming out from the darkness of the Rose Garden. Her right hand held a gun, her left an umbrella. Her inner pocket contained the master key that she had stolen from Goda. Her right pocket had a handful of bullets. Her left had a knife that she had taken from the kitchen. She was a, she was a carefully and perfectly outfitted murderer. Another bolt of lightning struck down from the swirling skies. It lit up only half of Kyrie's face. Her cheek was still covered with Jessica's blood. Under the eaves, Kyrie folded up her umbrella, smiled and spoke to no one. Hey everyone, I'm home.
Rudolph could be seen under the eaves of the chapel. He had hidden his gun in the nearby shadows and was now smoking a cigarette. Should be easy to trick that dimwit. And if it doesn't work, that's just too bad. He glanced over at the place he had stowed his gun. The cigarette smoke began to pleasantly cloud his mind. Battler isn't a kid anymore. He's an adult who can choose his path through life as he pleases. When animals grow up, it's normal for them to form a group and go on a journey. Humans are the only ones that keep treating their young like kids even after they get big. If I'd known it had come to this, I never would have begged for you to come back. I regret dragging you back into the family. He puffed out those words along with the smoke. When Battler came, he didn't intend to voice those regrets of his. Riddle sort of determined to play the part of the evil murderer who kills for money. He's still not here. What's taking him so long? At that moment, he heard the sound of someone stepping on gravel. He looked up thinking that Battler had finally arrived. But the sound had come from a direction opposite of the mansion. Mm. Rudolph. How could you do that to my husband? Anarchy. So you're alive. Sorry that I'm alive. Too bad. My husband wasn't so lucky. How could you? It should. Oh. You got one more in there. How could you? There we go. With the face obscured by anger and tears, Ava slowly walked closer, her gun raised. Her husband had been killed right in front of her. Probably wouldn't even hesitate. Realizing that a gun quivering with that a gun quivering with anger was pointed right at his chest, Rudolph backed away. As he pretended to retreat, he approached he approached the gun he had hidden in the shadows. C calm down, Anarchy. Put the gun down. I never wanted that to happen. Everything happened so fast, there was nothing I could do. How can you tell such half-baked lies? As Ava had said, it really had been a half-baked, pointless thing to say. Rudolph had, would have had, would have, would have said anything if it, if he thought he would calm Ava's emotions before she pulled the trigger, which she looked capable of doing at any moment now. Then Rudolph's foot came in contact with the gun. L let's just talk this over. George Coon should be here soon. Oh. Hey, George Coon, we're over here. Rudolph waved as though George was coming from behind Ava. Let Ava's attention turn in that direction. That's you. That idiot. My simple big sister has always been a sucker. Die. Gunfire. Then, a bit later, the sound of something heavier than rain drip dropping onto the cobblestone. 
Ah. 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 I've always been been able to see through your tricks. The bullet aim of fire went straight into Rudolph's chest. The bullet Rudolph fired at Ava missed, landing near her feet. Guess I was right. This gun does shoot low. <clears throat> He dropped the gun into a puddle with a splash, staggering and staggered backwards and leaned against the wall of the chapel. No, that's not it. All good westerns end with the bad guy's bullet missing. <sighs> Eva dashed up to him, kicked away the gun that had fallen into a puddle, and grabbed Rudolph by the collar. What about George? Where is he? I want to kill him. <sighs> Sorry, Hanaki. <sighs> Already got him. Liar. Did it in the bushes over there. Go take a look. You'll see soon. Get off. You. Ava, who claimed to know all of her little brother's tricks, also knew that Rudolph's final words as his consciousness began to fade thanks to the bullet wound were not a lie. How could you? George! George! An empty shell casing bounced off the cobblestone. The furious gun barrel was pressed against Rudolph's forehead. Go ahead and shoot. I doubt that'll bring you much peace, though. <laughs> A bolt of lightning turned everything white. However, the wall of the chapel was stained blood red. A red splash, a crushed tomato, fell from the back of Rudolph's head and covered the wall. Then, leaving a red trail behind him, Rudolph sagged downwards, sat on the ground, and fell over. George! 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 <laughs> Ava dashed off towards the bushes. She found George's corpse almost immediately, screamed and broke down, sobbing. Rudolph's bloody corpse was exposed to the rain that ran down off the eaves. His eyes were still wide open. A fist-sized, flesh-covered hole was open in the back of his head, and his insides were exposed to the open air. Inside it was a mixed jelly of flesh, brains, and spinal fluid. That goop which looked like someone had mixed it up with a spoon dripped from his eyes, nose, ears, and mouth, and the hole in his head. Dab. Dab. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> Angie clutched at her head, sobbing and moaning. Her father had dirtied his hands with murder over money. And on top of that, he had faced such a cruel end. And Angie had been forced to see his corpse. It was hard to imagine a more painful experience for a daughter to go through. Totally fed up with this. It's completely meaningless. Branka still son. I know you're here somewhere. Please make this game stop. There's no point to it. 
As if in answer to that yell, a black shadow appeared a few seats in front of them. Or perhaps she was sitting there the whole time. Maybe we couldn't see her until we were aware of her. It was, without a doubt, the back of Brankensell's head. Brankensell son! Pat down back there. Can you watch the show quietly? The witch turned around with bored eyes. So the two people yelling were the strange ones. We stop this! We realize that this is the sealed cat box world of October 4th and 5th. And this, these games are like messages. Or more like a roundabout love letter. A single message can be conveyed over several games. But now we understand. We know that endless tales can be seeped out of the sealed cat bo sealed two-day cat box. And beyond that, I even know the culprit and the motive. That's already been revealed and it doesn't have anything to do with this game. We both know the answer, that this is a cat box tale. So there shouldn't be any need for any further games. This is supposed to be a game between you and us. We already know the answer. The game should be over. Just shut up already. Didn't you hear Burn tell you to be quiet? Another shadow appeared in the next seat over, turned around, and scolded the pair. There is a point. If you just watch, you'll see it. <laughs> Are you the Game Master? Not at all. Then who is it? Could it be... Claire? If you watch, you'll see. Not much longer now. <laughs> the tragedy has already reached its climax. You'll survive, I wonder. <laughs> Aren't Castell isn't the game master? Then who is? Could Claire have created this cruel tale? Or are there even more witches playing around with this cat box? The guest house was wrapped in silence. There were no sounds. No trace of anyone's presence. No breathing from anyone alive. There wasn't anything to be heard anymore. If anything could be heard, it was the sound of the murderer's feet stepping across the floor. Kyrie slowly passed through the lounge. In her right hand was a gun. In her left hand was a knife. The knife was stained with blood, and some was still dripping from the tip. Leaving behind red tracks like a demon's footprints. Her hands were filled with tools of murder. So she wasn't capable of doing anything but murder. In that sense, at that moment, she was clearly and purely a murderer. The murderer went to the entrance hall, and then, only after reaching the front door, looked down to see the two blood-stained hands of a killer. 
his hand gripped the tools of death that had performed a cruel massacre. Then, at last, the murderer realized that it wouldn't even be possible to open the door like this, and tossed aside the knife. Then the murderer reached out to the door, turned around calmly, and spoke. Sorry, everyone. But don't worry. A few days later, the newspapers will be talking about an unfortunate accident. And I'm sure the news shows, the papers, and the rumor mongers everywhere will be sure that you spent your time in happy ignorance until the instant of the accident. In other words, you all had a good time until midnight on October 5th. So said the one who had stained the blood that bloody guest house red. At this hour, the cousins are all staying up late and playing around. And the servants who and the servants who have to get up early are all snoring. The ones on the late shift are probably filling in the log or taking a break about now. And that's how it is. Oh. Oh. From where I am now, I can hear laughter coming from the cousin's room. <laughs> Humans inside the cat box probably never understand what Kyrie was saying. Only she, shut inside the cat box of the explosion accident, could know what it really meant. That's how the rain poured down heavily. Carrie almost picked up an umbrella, but then she stopped suddenly, as if she thought of something. And she started walking out into the rain, not caring at all whether she got wet or not. Did the murderer not want an umbrella to get in the way of her gun? Or was it, or was she hoping that the rain could act as a shower to get the blood off of her? Kyrie stopped walking, as though something unexpected had caught her attention. However, this time it was not a whim of hers. How could you? Kill my husband! Oh. Evanesson. Not surprising. How could I have missed you from that distance? I'm, I'm not so surprised. I didn't think I'd survive. You came here from the underground stairway behind the chapel, right? In that case... That's right. I bumped into Rudolph in front of the chapel. And how was he doing? Oh, just wonderful. I managed to have, uh, have a friendly sibling chat for the first time in a while. Hmm. I see. He's such a show-off, but so unreliable in a tight spot. Looks like he can't do anything without me after all. After that short exchange of words, Pierre already knew that Rudolph had been killed. However, no trace of urgency or panic rose to her face. She just closed her eyes with her usual unconcerned expression. When she opened them again, she had regained her composed smile. Thank you. I'm grateful. This way, I can really can have everything to myself. 
Let's have blood on your clothes. You just came out of the guest house, didn't you? Don't, don't tell me. Yes, that's right. I'm right in the middle of a murder case at the moment. You killed them? All of them? Even Maria Chan? There was no need to let them live until morning. When morning came, there would be an uproar, and that could be a pain. They might have used a radio to contact someone off the island and gotten help. So, this clearly, this was clearly the optimal move to take. If you spin the chessboard around and look at it that way, right? Monster! I can't believe you would be so planted if I agree that you'd commit murder! You weren't doing so bad yourself. No, that, that was an accident. I didn't mean to kill them. Unlike you. No, just like me. If that gun hadn't gone off, you'd have kept on ar arguing and jumping at each other. Then, the rest of you would have eventually reached the same answer as me, just a few steps slower. I'm not a murderer! Not true. You're just a murderer who didn't get a chance. You've just been saved by, the ac by that accidental discharge. If it weren't for a bit of good luck, and if I hadn't moved before you did, then you would have played the same role I'm playing now. That fact won't go away, no matter how much you try to deny it. It's the truth of a different future. Don't... don't try to confuse me! However, on the inside, Ava understood. Back then, she had probably been saved by the accidental discharge, by coincidence. If the argument had continued much longer, she would surely have grown a desire to kill Kraus and the others. I might have even carried it out. She simply could not deny the existence of the demon, deep within her heart. Only the theater goers knew. They knew that she could become a killer in another world. Kiri, who didn't have the theater-going ability, knew this fact as well. Maybe there really was something extraordinary about her after all. So for some time, Eva could only grind her teeth in silence, her pointing her gun. I... I don't understand. Impossible, mother. You felt the pain of giving birth to your own child. How can you not know how precious a life is? How are you capable of doing all this? That's the thing about kids. If you just sleep around, they get made all by themselves. That's not what I'm talking about. They say that children are bonds, right? Oh, what? Children are bonds used to tie you to your husband. She was a bond to make Rudolf San acknowledge me so I could take him back from that woman. But you've killed Rudolf San now. You understand what that means, right? What do you mean? I understand. Just that right now. I'm the wife of no man, and I have no intention of being a mother. 
I am me. Kyrie. Now that Rudolph sounds dead, I'm not even an Ushermia anymore. I live to benefit me. Right now, Rudolph is, a de is dead. So maybe you aren't a wife anymore. You still have Angie, Jen, don't you? You're still a mother, aren't you? Didn't you hear what I just said about bonds? Now that Rudolph-san is gone, Angie is no use to me. You, you. How can any mother say that about their own daughter? Have a on. Let's put a stop to this. We can be honest here. Honest? Did either of us marry because we wanted children? We didn't, right? We married because we wanted to live with the man we loved. And once you're married, you never want to let that man go. For the rest of your life, correct? Children are just weapons to be used for that goal. I never have ch children for a reason like that. But people can have children, just for that reason. Kyria kept on speaking emotionlessly, ignoring the falling rain. Her relaxed smile didn't falter for an instant. Angie was just a chain I used to tie Rudolph's on to me. Or you could call her a chess piece. Someone to play the role of the kid in our family drama. And to me, Angie was nothing more than a piece necessary so I could act the part of a good mother in front of Rudolph's on. Could you say that to Angie Chan's face? That wouldn't be just a bit too sad, so I won't say it to her directly. I plan to write to her. I plan to write to her a letter asking her to forgive her bad mother, then vanish from her life. You've seen what Rosa San and Maria Chan are like, right? Now that Rudolph San's gone. Now that Rudolph San's gone, Angie's just a chain tying me down. I'll go back to being just Kyrie and enjoy the rest of my life at my leisure. A new challenge and a new life. And maybe even a new love. <laughs> And you call yourself human. You call yourself Angie Chan's mother. <laughs> Who gives a damn about Angie? I never liked that little brat. How? How can you? You've been released from your family drama too, haven't you? Let's sing the praises of a woman's freedom. You should thank me for having George Kun killed for you too. You monster! The 
<laughs> Two yells and the sound of gunfire thundered across the dark rose garden. Slowly, Ava fell backwards. I just landed in a puzzle, scattering countless drops of water. Across from her, Kyrie spun around as though dancing. Beautiful black rose petals scattered around her. The petals were a dark, dark red. As they sprayed from her throat, she spun around in a circle and slowly crumpled. And she fell to the ground, sending muddy water flying. The two women had shot and fallen. However, when the thunder roared, Ava only, only Ava sat back up. <sighs> Ava hadn't been shot. Kyrie's intensity had made her fall backwards, but the bullet had once again slipped right past her. Ava cursed her good luck. Why couldn't this luck have saved her husband or her son? Die there. For Auntie Chan's sake as well. You'll be killed in an explosion accident. Until the moment of your death, you'll worry about the daughter you left behind. Yeah. I'll write that into the lid of the cat box. When Kyrie heard this, blood dripped from her grinning mouth. And she seemed to say something in response. However, her voice came out only as globs of blood from the hole in her throat, not words. Mom! Mom! <laughs> it's a lie. It's all a lie! <sighs> Angie, please calm down. This is just a game. That couldn't be possibly what your mother truly feels. It's just something that the Game Master made Aunt Kyrie's peace say. But saying that did nothing to calm Angie's sobs. And I don't blame her. Even if she knows it's just a game, she's been forced to see not only her mother's death, but also her mother announcing that she was the culprit of a mass of a mass murder who didn't even love her own daughter. Anyone would sob after hearing that. Rankenstelson, enough of this. I don't care who the Game Master is. Stop this pointless game right now! When Leon yelled this, the theater suddenly went pitch black, swallowed in darkness. However, that wasn't enough to shock Leon. Then he continued to yell Burn Castle's name into the darkness, telling the witch to stop this game. Then a single beam of light shone down upon the stage. There was Claire, the one who had appeared for just a second right before this cruel game began. Claire? So, you were the Game Master after all? I don't get it, why? Claire didn't answer. In fact, it looked as though she hadn't even heard. 
Her eyes were blank, and you couldn't tell what she was looking at. In fact, she was even forgetting to blink. She looked just like a doll. Another beam of light lit the side of, lit the, side of the stage. Beneath that light stood Burn Castell. At the same moment, though there appeared to be no one in the audience, a thunderous applause rang out! <laughs> Burncastle raised her right hand in response to the applause. She kept doing so until it died down. Burncastle's son! So, you were the Game Master after all. Leon. How many times do I have to tell you that I'm not the Game Master? Then are you saying it's Claire? That's impossible! Yep. Of course it's impossible. After all... Claire died. We were just conducting a funeral. Did you forget that? Then just who's standing there? corpse. She's not a mannequin. So of course she still has their insides. She's hiding it under a pure exterior, but she's actually packed full of guts. When Burncastle raised her right hand, a light fell onto it, and a black, shining scythe appeared there. It was a cold, merciless, and cruel object. Something a classic Grim Reaper might hold. What are you planning to do? When they're alive, you can enjoy watching them struggle. When they're dead, you can enjoy tearing out their guts. Those are things you get to enjoy twice. That's what it means to be a witch of theater going. Burncastle pressed the blade of her reaper's scythe against Claire's stomach and slowly slid it across. Then along the line she traced, Claire's dress was sliced open. It was unclear that the scythe which she held was not a fake, one for theatrical use. And it was clear just what she just what she planned to do next that made her cruel smile so fitting. Angie, can you hear me? I hear you. Tear me to bits. Make me read. What's next? Are you showing me the this worst possible tale to hurt me even more? Is this your fun? Yeah, I bet it is. I had a blast too! You think that I'd give up after that? You think I'll sit around crying any longer because of that disgusting game of yours? Both you and Leon seem to have the wrong idea. I'm not a Game Master. This tale is not one that I created. Then that woman in the dress in the, is the Game Master? No, she isn't. That can't be. Then who is the Game Master? Who wrote this disgusting tale? You still don't understand. What don't we understand? Angie. You gambled everything on a faint chance of miracle, throwing yourself forward. I invited you to October 4th and 5th of 1986 out of respect for your courage. What was your goal? 
to take your family back. That would be a very difficult thing, and without the blessing of a miracle, a thoroughly impossible one. You were prepared for that, weren't you? Yes, I'm prepared! And I still haven't given up on Oni-chan, Mom and Dad. Whether you give up or not is your choice. That's your own game, after all. I won't support you, and I won't even watch. I've already enjoyed my feel of games that use the piece that you are, so I have no need for you any longer. Glad to hear it. Then why am I here? Are you the one who invited me? Yes, that's right. I invited you here. To thank you for entertaining me for a while as my peace. To thank me? <laughs> so this is how you witches show gratitude? Sure, this has to be loads of fun for you, beast! How could you make this kind, this kind of game, and do that to mom and dad? Angie, you made a wish, hoping to take your family back. However, you also made another wish. Remember? No, I don't! You wanted to know what happened on that day. What happened on Rokunjima on October 4th and 5th of 1986? Didn't Angie leave on her journey with Amakusa because she longed to answer that question? That's right. So what's your point? You don't mean... Leon realized what Burncastle was getting at. Realized was able not able to say anymore. The game master neither Burn Castle nor Claire. Then who is it? That's the wrong question. There is no game master. That could only mean one thing. Angie, you still don't understand. What? This is the truth. The inside of the cat box of October 4th and 5th, 1986. Afterwards, Eva survived the explosion by escaping to Kumadorian. And since she never spoke of the inside of the cat box, no matter how much she wanted to know, the truth was shut within the cat box for all eternity. What are you saying? Only ever returned alive. Even though the police claimed it was an accident, the public didn't believe it. Then she took over her husband's company, and the harder she worked to make it more and more successful, the more enemies she made. A public image of her as a great queen of conspiracy grew stronger and stronger. I'm sure she wanted to tell people about the truth. The truth that no one would ever believe without proof. Bit by bit, Eva's heart began to snap. You rejected Eva, so, so she rejected you in turn. The relationship between the last two members of your family was strained to the limit. Each time she compared you with her beloved son, she grew more and more twisted and broken. Then, then a strange message bottle was picked up and became a topic of conversation. It contained a bizarre story, one that told of a mysterious serial murder connected to Kenjima's gold. Everyone rejected the explosion accident theory and started to think of conspiracy theories. Some of those theories named Ava as a culprit, which terminated her even more. 
However, Eva used even that to build up the cat box. And until the moment of her death, she protected it. She protected the lock that held the cat box shut. So, no human would ever reach the truth inside the cat box. Not unless those witches who crossed the sea of fragments open the lock. This is the truth. You're lying. You're lying, lying! If this really is the truth, you should be able to say so in red! There's no way you can! Of course there isn't! Ah! Angie! Angie, calm down! Uh! Angie writhed with such strength that the chains on her arms and legs looked like they might snap. All over her body, a red, gooey liquid started to seep out. It was as though cracks had opened up all over her, and blood was leaking out of all of them. What's that? You want me to announce it clearly with the red truth? Then I'll say it, just for you. That this is all truth. No! And his yell covered up Burns' red truth. <laughs> Stupid kid. If only you hadn't made me say that, you could have shut it up inside the cat box. But you just had to ask, right? I knew you would, of course. And I so wanted to see you scream like that. A lovely expression like that should keep me laughing for about a hundred years. <laughs> Go back to being a scrap meat. There's a gal in there too. Josh, you're still going. I oh. think maybe some loud noises have caused Ooh. something. <laughs> I'm afraid someone has come up to check on him. Oh shit! <laughs> oh no! <laughs> oh no no no! You want me, you want, I can take over for Angie. It's fine. Give it, give it, give it a bit of fun. I am back. It is all right. <laughs> I. I had to explain that I was simply doing something and those were not yells of pain, actually. Oh, no. <laughs> Very convincing acting, Joshua. Very good. Yes, that's what I wanted to hear. Just, just checking, like, you're still good to keep on going as Angie, right? Or do you want somebody else to go? Yes! The All embarrassment right. of your voice. It should keep me entertained for another 100 years. <laughs> Mom. Dad. Oh, wait, hold on. Mom. Mom, Dad, it's a lie, right? Lies, lies. Ah! Angie, Angie. As Angie held out, held her hands and screamed, her head and screamed. The blood dripping from her finally grew so thick that it started scattering all over the place. And bit by bit, her body began to melt. No. To fall apart. Then bits of her began to pile up onto the chair. There was, nothing, there was nothing more than a pile of guts and scraps. Is the truth really that sacred? How absurd, how foolish. Why can't humans control their own truth? 
they stupidly search for the truth, like that's all that matters. And when they finally find it and can't stand it, they turn themselves into scrap meat. Hey, are you watching? Claire? <laughs> you wanted to hide the truth too, didn't you? For fun, you wrote several catbox tales. And I plan to seal them in the message bottles, like the end of a mystery novel you loved. Then you threw them into the sea. To save those who would suffer if they knew the truth. You sealed everything in a cat box, and Eva provided a lock. <laughs> <laughs> and I've sliced that box open for you. <laughs> all that effort you spent to hide it has gone to waste. I've exposed all the truth you hid with your death. <laughs> <laughs> Is that what you've been after? You did all of this just to mock Claire's death? And then you showed it to Angie to make her suffer? You really were an evil witch after all. I've been a witch the whole time. A traveler whose only goal is to escape boredom. Care for it and love it while it's alive, then eat the guts when it's dead. And so we just leave. I can't forgive you for what you've done. You've hurt Angie and humiliated Claire, the person I would have become in another world. I won't forgive you. Leon. You're still Claire's hope. Even after her death. <sighs> From the moment Claire got thrown off that cliff, her fate was already sealed. I'm sure she felt a little bit of salvation. To know that another Harold lives in happiness in another world. Right. I'm her salvation. So I must live life to the fullest for the both of us. Leon. Let me show you just a bit more of this tale of the truth. I'm not interested. No, it'll be very interesting. After the duel between Eva and Kyrie, the cast out is wrapped in silence. Let me invite you to the parlor at that point in time. The parlor? The one in the mansion? Burncastle snapped her fingers, and the scene of the mansion's parlor unfolded before them. In the cruel tale that they had just been shown, the parlor hadn't been particularly important. Jessica had been summoned to the parlor, but she was then immediately led to the dining hall and killed there. So there hadn't been anything to see in the parlor. And, in fact, nothing to see in the parlor now appearing before Leon. What's supposed to be here? <laughs> As you can see, there's nothing here. But watch. I'm about to show you something interesting. You call it interesting. That's a sure sign it isn't. <laughs> Go on, take a look. It's right there. Right in that corner. Burncastle was pointing in nothing more than a corner of the, the room. There was nothing there. She had told Leon to look there, so I was expecting something terrible to be there. There really wasn't anything there at all. That's right, there's nothing there. At least, not in this world. But what if we peek into the next fragment over? On the white, blank wall, bit by bit, a splash of blood seeped into view. Then, right there, a corpse appeared. But, that couldn't be. 
This is... M me? It was Leon. Dying, lying dead against the wall. Shremia Leon's corpse lay there exposed. What's going on here? Why am I here? This is supposed to be Claire's world, not mine. Claire and I can't exist at the same time, right? Yes, that's right. That's because I just switch worlds. Switch fragments. Switch to your world, that is. I don't understand. It's very simple. They both end the same way. <laughs> I don't get it! Why should I be dead here? In your world. On October 4th, 1986. Beatrice's funeral was held just before the family conference. Yes, I know that. And for me, that happened today a short while ago. I wonder what will happen between that time and late at night. Nothing at all! The cousins will all play together and the whole family will have dinner together. Then comes the family conference after night falls. You are going to succeed the Hedgy when you return 20, right? Was the entire family satisfied with that, I wonder? I don't know if they were satisfied, but the decision has been made. The head made it himself. Looks like even you don't really believe they were satisfied. That's it right there. Kinzo adored you more than anything, so he tried to make an exception and have you succeed to hit you directly. Of course, his children wouldn't have been happy with that. The siblings objected to having Leon succeed the headship. Oh, wait, that's you. Even Krauss joined in saying that Leon was still too young. Then, on the night of the family conference, Kinza tried proposing a difficult riddle. Would it be. That's right. <laughs> the riddle of the epitaph. As you can tell by the mechanism set in this chapel, Kinza set up the epitaph trick near the beginning, when the mansion on Arkejima was being built. He had the romantic idea of something using it as a test to select his successor. Kinzo decided to present that riddle at the family conference. Did he plan to give the position of success to the person who solved it? Where they promised to reconsider Leon's proper position as a, as a successor if it was solved. Either way, Kinzo was confident. He was confident that no one would be able to solve this tough riddle, when which he had created himself. After that, everything happened exactly like the truth you just saw. The saving slowly dried away, and there was a quarrel over the pile of gold. <laughs> then Kiri and Rudolf decided to prevent any chance of the crime being discovered the next morning and an outcry being raised by committing murder late that night. They used a phone call to call the kids out from the cousin room one by one and kill them. As the first of the cousins, you were the first to be called out. Then, Kiri shot you dead, right here in the parlor. No, that's not quite right. You had your Shirmillion from the early evening on October 4th, 1986. So I'll say this way. Tonight, Kiri will shoot you dead in the parlor. That's insane. 
It's... That's right. Probability. Just like Leon can be born from Claire thanks to a rare miracle. Aunt Kiri only commits murder with a tiny probability close to zero. That must be it. Aren't you the witch who specializes in finding extremely improbable worlds? That is correct. I had to find one fragment of the 2,578,979 917. You know, to discover the miracle that is you. However... It was very, very easy to find this result for your world. After all, probability isn't a factor. I'm a witch who can find any miracle, no matter how unlikely it is. But they can't find things that don't exist. If the Witch of Certainty really guarantees that something is certain, even I can't twin, can twin against her. But... Then... I'm... With 2,578,916 out of 2,578,917 probability, you live in the world with your Claire. Get toyed with by an inescapable fate and reach a tragic end. And with a 1 out of 2,578,917 probability, you live as a sure meal Leon and are killed by Kyria tonight. In other words, your fate, no, the fate of the two, the two of you share, just in an inescapable dead end. A hell of a fate, with 2,578,917 out of 2,578,917 probability. To put it another way, it's a certain fate, with absolutely no chance for a miracle. <laughs> Sucks for you, Claire. Or should I say, Beatrice. Just when a bright light seemed to turn the world white, the scene suddenly changed back to the theater. On the stage, Burncastle's reaper scythe slid across Claire's stomach as the latter stood absolutely still. A red line was drawn across the white skin, exposed now that the dress had been cut, and black blood began to seep out. Beatrice. Throughout in that inescapable, certain, locked away pair of days, you became a witch who could give birth to endless possibilities within that two-day cat box. In exchange, it was absolutely certain that you would not be saved or rewarded. However, you had a dream. You dreamed of a sure me alien. You consoled yourself with the thought of a miracle world where you could have lived in happiness without ever becoming Claire. I had to work hard to fight Leon. Just as Beatrice dreamed, Leon's existence is a true miracle. And at the end of your funeral, I wanted to show you. To show you that even with that miracle, you couldn't have escaped from tragedy. With a small crack between the bars of the jail that imprisoned her, the witch called Beatrice dreamed of a world where she might have been happy. However, the space she could see through the crack in the bars. She's another part of the same jail. The more I hear, the less I understand about you. Why would you do something like this? I lost the game to Beatrice, so I want to get back at her. <laughs> Yeah, now I feel a lot better about losing that game. Hey, Beato, are you watching? Can you see this? <laughs> and do you remember? Remember when I promised you that a miracle wouldn't occur with certain things? So, 
Leon. Along with your tiny dear world, right before Beata's eyes. It looks like the theater going witches are all sick and tired of those happy family get together scenes. So I'll send you to the moment just before Kiri shoots you. Then I'll make Beata watch this moment. <laughs> Die, scum Leon. The last hope of that scum Beato. <laughs> Burncastle raised her reaper scythe, flung it down with gusto, and plunged it deep into Claire's stomach. Did you think you'd get an easy death? <laughs> But you be letting a tank at the corpse gas is my specialty. The blade under the scythe and heartlessly and ruthlessly, brutally, raised it up into the air. Along a vertical line from Claire's stomach to her chest, the blade cut deeply, slicing Claire open. The red black insides jutted out, then burst like a dam breaking, cover the world covering the world with dark red entrails. Steal the Italian's gold, you say? You coward, assure me! You call yourself a soldier of the Empire! But father... I do love and respect you, father. But your feelings are something I am. Um... Why? Why did you save me? Why didn't you let me die? Because of the terrible injury I've been forced to live in a body like this. I never wanted to live in a body like this. This body this is not capable of love. What? What's the point in living like that? This isn't a human's life. It's like being a furniture. That's right. I'm furniture. Furniture. Why? Why did you let me die back then? <laughs> uh, when I came to... I was in the parlor of the mansion. When did I get here? I heard a sound behind me, then slowly turned around. And there... Sorry, please don't take this personally. Huh? I could see down the frigid barrel of the gun Aunt Kiri was pointing. Then she slowly pulled the trigger. I could feel a razor-sharp wind pass through my body, like a knife slicing through butter. Prepared for death and hoping to see my fate until the end, I slowly opened my eyes. The world had been cut in two. Kyrie was frozen in place like a statue, still pointing her, her gun with a cold smile on her face. And had been cut in half at an angle, the top part of her slowly sliding off to the side. No, that wasn't quite right. That wasn't right at all. It wasn't just Kyrie. The whole world had been sliced in half at an angle and was slowly sliding off to one side. Then immediately, after Fissure seemed to appear across the world, it shattered. Uh, uh. You! When you own a cat, you tend to pick up their habits. 
He pointed at Burncastle with the tip of the pitch black sword that had sliced the world, glaring at her. <laughs> What's this? Are you saying you came back here and win? There's no way you would end things on a happy note. Do you really hate Beatrice so much? You think I let her women get away? I have to pay her back in full for the humiliation she caused me. When I held a grudge, a mere century isn't long enough for me to forget it. You're a gloomy person. Come on, you mustn't neglect my heart. <laughs> Hi, okay, Leon. Hey, what's wrong? Leon suddenly doubled over, groaning. It just hurts. It's. Will roughly grabbed the hand that was pressed against Leon's chest and tore it away. Blood was seeping out from where Leon's hand had been. The place of the bullet would have entered if Kyrie had shot Leon. <laughs> Looks like Leon's body. He's almost trying to jock up its faint. Leon, hang in there. Damn these chains. When Will tried to pick Leon's body up, he finally noticed that the chains attached to each wrist and ankle. What's this? Are you trying to take that kid in a slip? I won't let you. I'm about to let everyone watch as in cast of blood, despairing at the fact that there's no hope in any of the many worlds. Before finally dying in agony. Leon isn't a show. Will swung his pitch black sword and destroyed the chains binding Leon. The chains and shackles shattered into little bits like glass, then vanished. You tend to get away in the way of my fun. You aren't God. All you can do is sneer at fate. Leon's fate is going to be decided by Leon. You can't treat a human's fate like a toy. <laughs> You've got guts, thanks to the great Brancastle Witch of the Senate. I have no more use for you either, get it? You've shown that Vieto's fantasy is a mere mystery and cut it to pieces. You've fulfilled your role. I would have let you be if only you had just left quietly. Now that you've strolled back in here, you can hardly complain if I make you my plaything. to me, my cute kiddies. Scratch them up and tear off their skin. Build them like grapes. When Burncastle clapped her hands twice, countless pairs of glaring jewels appeared all around Will and Leon. They were clearly cat eyes, but the way that the drool hung from their mouths looked far more terrifying than any cat. Well... Uh. I'll handle this. Trimming kitty nails is nothing new to me. The number of jewels surrounding them already reached into the thousands. Will pointed his sword in one direction after another, warding off the surrounding cats. Get a grip, Leon. 
you, ha you haven't been shot. Don't acknowledge that you have been. No, that you're going to be shot. Leon tried to fight an incredible tearing pain. No. It was a fight against the promised future that Burn Castle had shown. But for the sake of that future, which the Witch of Miracles had guaranteed would contain no miracle, was firm and merciless. Bit by bit, and yet unceasingly, it continued to pierce into Leon's chest. Listen up. I'm going to break through the, the perimeter for just a second. When I do, I need you to run with all you've got. It doesn't matter where. Just make sure you get far away from this place. And keep on running no matter what happens. I'll try. To the best of my ability. If I can't do it, please forgive me. If you can't do it? Enough warning. I won't forgive you. Neither will Claire. Did you forget that Claire is one in two million five hundred and seventy eight thousand nine hundred and seventeen chance? If you give up, you're betraying all the other yous in countless worlds. So don't lose heart. Keep on struggling and struggling. Don't look for a miracle. Be one. Be a miracle. Going to reach a happy future. Don't give up. Don't complain. Just you. Just you try complaining again. This time I'll pinch your ass. Okay. Very confident you are taking this kid to be a miracle when you stand before the Witch of Miracles. Miracles are no more than fantasy. Grovel in this world that has been convicted as a mystery and died horribly like a worm. The witches of theater are going to look forward to watching it. Call that mystery? You think I'd never accept a mystery without heart? I got the cat who wants to be made into a shaman and strike first. Ah, what a pain. Let's have all of you at once. I'm Lord H. Wright, SSVD's head inquisitor of heresy. This will be my final time I draw my sword. Trash him, kiddos. At once, all the cat's eyes opened wide undulating and spinning in a spiral, and swallowed Will up. But Will and Leon weren't swallowed up. The cats that had flown in, to, in at them from all directions were now being launched away, like they were being a, like they were a balloon popping around the pair. No, not bad. I don't give a damn about your kitties. It's just the mama cat I care about. Burn Castle, Witch of Miracles! It's about time someone trimmed your claws. And the flash of the black blade spun in a dark tornado and scattered the cats once more. Leon, realizing this was the opening Will had planned, 
ran all out, still cr clutching at his at a heaving chest. Well, I'm running. Diana has a weak stomach. Make sure you only give her milk that's warm. Huh? By the time Leon asked Will to repeat what he had said, he had already leapt into the stage and was now confronting Burncastle. It was at the climax of a show. Loud cheers erupted from the pitch black audience seating. On either side of Claire, who lay with, their ins with her insides exposed, stood Will with his pitch black sword and burn castle with the scythe that could harvest miracles from fate. Kyrie and Rudolph are the culprits and they massacred the people on the island. They called Leon out to the parlor and then shot Leon to death. Sorry, but I can't acknowledge this truth of yours as a mystery. This is all fantasy. Fantasy? You can only get that to try and let Leon escape fate. By no means, try. <laughs> Is forbidden to have a crime without all clues presented. Surely Will's black sword must have cut through Burn Castle's body. However, it had no effect, like cl like cutting the reflection of the moon on the water. What's this? What do you mean by clues? I won't accept your mystery with Kyrie and Rudolph as the culprits. You won't find clues showing that they're the culprits, no matter which game you look at. Of course you won't. Even if they did exist at one point, the whole island blew up. Which means there aren't any clues. And that means there, this is no mystery. It's fantasy. Huh? It's impossible for an unprovable truth to become truth in the human world. In other words, even the actual truth cannot cross the boundary of a cat box. <laughs> Are you trying to share the truth inside a cat box? <laughs> Is this how the mystery shadow is supposed to fight? like a howl of a wild animal. Burncastle carelessly tossed her scythe aside. Fighting itself is a waste of time. Get over here, scum. Try and cut me all you like. I'll listen to all you've got to say. The twenty wedges will pierce every part of your heartless mystery. Here it comes. And when you realize you can't defeat me with those twenty wedges, you know what will happen next, right? <laughs> Come on. I'll play with you, if that's what you want. <sighs> Oh, well, it's uh, already. Uh, my, the, the gain on my mic just got super fucked for no reason, and I had to put it back down to normal midway through. And because of this, I, co I couldn't stop voice acting while figuring out the problem and fixing it. Man, Roller is so sexy, he makes me want to kiss AC. Hmm.
I mean, that's expensive though. That was a good one. That was a good session. Yep. But wait, not over more. yet. <laughs> Trying to ignore an incredible pain in their chest, Leon kept on running and running without stopping. I dashed out of the theater of the theater-going witches, then ran through an incomprehensible world of blackness. Before I knew it, I was running through a place that looked like a sea of stars. Or maybe the bottom of the ocean with stars scattered around. If I get careless for a second, I'll probably trip. No, if I get careless, I won't be able to tell if I'm running. Or just making running motions as I freefall, endlessly seeking deeper into the ocean of stars. I just kept on running without any goal or target. I mustn't stop moving. I mustn't fall down here. If I fall, I'll crush all the hopes of me's and countless worlds. There's a happy world that Beatrice has dreamed of. And I'm their last hope, the only one who can reach that world. Even though I understand this, the truth thrust in front of me by the witch who controls miracles, who says that there can be no miracle, is cruelly gouging itself into my chest. Sorry, Will. My body is already... From Leon, finally. He's come to the fierce pain and fate. Hell over. Leon's body was held roughly from behind and lifted up. Uh, uh, Will! You're okay! No, not really. Don't you give up. Didn't I tell you I'd pinch your ass? Sorry. I'm really sorry. But... On that day, in that place, I was fated to be killed. That's right. All humans are fated to die in the end. Does that mean their lives are meaningless? Of course not! What a person's life means, what it's worth, what it is. These are the things per each person decides for themselves. No matter what sort of fate is forced upon them. Don't accept it. Create your own world for yourself. Will, your, your left arm. Ah, ah, right. <laughs> Must have forgotten it. It'd be a pain to go back and get it now. There were rips all over Will's body. Also, his left arm had been brutally torn off from the elbow. His clothes were in tatters. It looked like a blood-stained scarecrow. Then, Leon noticed. Though this place had once felt like a sea filled with stars, both above and below them, the stars had now gathered together and were surrounding them. It was huge. It was a huge, even number of stars, all glaring at the two of them. Will was holding Leon with one arm. He couldn't even take his sword out. However, he didn't let go. He was determined to let Leon escape from here. To lead Leon towards the happy tale that the Beatrice had always dreamed of. Beneath, behind the cat, whose eyes glowed under the empty darkness, the queen of cats who permitted no miracles appeared. Willard, put Leon down. If you do, I'll let you go. Go file a protest at the Great Court. We can put it up for a debate. Will... I... I won't leave you behind. I need to tell you. To tell you why I quit SSBD. Come to think of it, even I don't know that. 
Why'd you do it? It's because I got fed up with all those damn sob story mysteries. We'll survive and reach a happy ending. I'll show her. De Beatrice died in despair thinking that we were only bad endings. There are only bad endings. I'll show her that a happy ending can exist. That's why I'll never put you down. Will. You can take the rest of my left arm, cats. I'll give you my legs too if you want them. But I'm not letting go of Leon here. I'll take Leon away from the bad ending you represent, even if I have to crawl my way out of here. Are you okay with this, Leon? Will's going to die protecting you. You don't want that, right? Go ahead and tell him to leave you behind for you be and save himself. Will. Yeah. Please don't leave me here. I'll certainly survive. And so will you. <laughs> That's the spirit. As he said this, Will held Leon tight. There you have it. We'll keep struggling on, Burn Castle. We won't give up on the chance of a miracle. You're saying that? When the Witch of Miracles has promised with certainty that there will be no miracles. <laughs> so long, you two. Go collect dust in the depths of oblivion, unable to even die and disappear. Come, my kiddies. I won't order you to kill them. Just clean up the two pieces because the roll has ended. A hundred million, a trillion, ten quadrillion cats all bared their fangs. In that starry sky of cat eyes, countless flesh-colored mouths opened, exposing countless teeth. The world was wrapped in flesh and blood and fangs. Now, we're gonna go on a little bit longer. Yes, the I believe this next part is relatively short. This generally, this is a fairly short part, and I don't really know will... how else we would like integrate this, so we're just gonna gonna go ahead and go yes. for it. Uh, is this the tea party? It is. It is the question mark tea party. It is. It is under twenty minutes. It's under twenty minutes long. Yeah, we're good. Uh, I forgot about uh, question mark tea parties. Two white pieces were set on the chessboard. The countless black pieces surrounding them were now just packed together, not even placed in the squares. Burncastle tipped the two white pieces over and took them off the board. Is it really okay to end it like this? Yes. Yes, as usual, your readings truly do fall comfortably on my ears, my Miko. As you wish, they've scrapped out even the inner parts of the cuts. Was it enough of an answer check for you? Indeed. I'm quite satisfied. Using the answers you've revealed as a key, I will go through, go back through all the tales so far. Opening the closed rooms like treasure boxes one by one. It is fun finding the key. And it's even more fun to stick it into all of the locks. You've done very well, my Miko. 
From now on, let me enjoy my thoughts alone. And this has been enough. The Witch of Theater Going sat back in her rocking chair, a satisfied smile on her face as though enjoying a pleasant aftertaste. There's no need for a game board anymore. She just had to go back to it in her mind, with the whole set of tales to check whether her theory was right or not. It seemed to leave her pleasantly drunk, even better than the most expensive wine. Are you done with me now? You've done well, my Miko. I absolve you of your duty. I will return to my slumber. I'd like to enjoy this pleasant dream for a few more centuries. And when I grow tired of that, you will find me yet another tale to keep me entertained. For those centuries which will pass in the blink of an eye, I grant you your freedom. <laughs> Splendidly done, Bern Castell, my cute, cute Miko. It's not like I care. Go ahead, draw up and die. So long for the rest of time. You call a few mere centuries for the rest of time. <laughs> Catherine's consciousness slowly faded away. As the owner of the study slumber grew deeper, the lights about the room slowly darkened. Good night forever, Aurora. You don't need this game board anymore. I'll take it. Burn Castle reached out toward the Beato's game board, which lay on the table in front of Featherin's rocking chair and tapped it twice. The game board and the pieces flew into the air, folded up and put themselves away, then landed on Burn Castle's outstretched hand. I still haven't had a chance to do any real game mastering. I just did Beato's funeral. That, and tearing out the guts. I still haven't done anything. Burncastle's smile twisted evilly, and the game board floated up once again, and a world unfolded itself above Burncastle's palm. Hey. Pieces of Beata's getting? I'm gonna have you spin an incredibly brutal tale that I'll find incredibly entertaining. Tremble in fear all the certain fate you've been promised. By the name of Brandcastle, Witch of Miracles. And as the final Game Master of Beata's game, I proclaim it. Though just saying it would be boring. Maybe I should follow Beatrice rules and say it in red. Are you sure? There might still be some witches with naive hopes. Ah, Lambda. So you're here. Of course, you're always wherever I am. Go on and say it. You tell those naive dreamers. Yes. I will. As the Witch of Miracles, and as the final Game Master, I proclaim the start of the final game, and make you this promise. I won't give this game a happy ending. <laughs> the 
A single girl was crying in a desolate, quiet chapel. She was a small girl, only six years old. The girl who would, for ten years, for six, for twelve years, starting now, lament the fact that she wasn't on this island during October 4th and 5th, 1986. Then, a single man appeared. The man noticed the girl, walked up to her quietly, trying not to scare her, and put his arms gently around her shoulders. Uh, Ani-chan? I've been looking for you, Angie. The girl jumped into her big brother's chest and started crying again. What's wrong? Why are you so sad? Today, a kid in class bullied me. He said the people on the TV were saying mom had ties to bad people. So she... So he said that mom and dad were the culprits. And that they probably killed everyone. I asked Aunt Ava, hoping she'd say it wasn't true, but she didn't say anything. Mom and dad aren't bad people, right? Right? Poor kid. Everyone keeps saying whatever they like about what might have happened on that island on that day. Sit over here. Okay. And the man pointed to the floor. A cloud of gold butterflies gathered there and created a chair. The girl obediently sat down on it. You know... You know, don't you, Oni Chan? You know that mom and dad aren't bad people, right? Yeah. Of course I know that. I know that none of them are bad people. Then tell me. What happened that day? What happened on Rokenjima? Okay. I'll tell you. This is what happened on that day. Is it a scary story? Of course not. Is it a sad story? Not at all. Then, what kind of story is it? You can decide that for yourself when you hear it. It definitely isn't a painful story. So listen up. Okay. Patheroni chan On that day, we all went to Rokenjima. There were a lot of us. It was an important day. The day of the family conference. <laughs> Where should I begin? This is the final game made just for Angie. Listen, Angie. This is what happened on Rokenjima of that day. It isn't sad or painful at all.
Gonna fucking cry, TBH. Good work, everybody. That was some beautiful yeah. shit. Beautiful. Yeah. Everybody. Uh, Fantastic uh, jobs yeah. all around. Phenomenal. Love it. You love it. Sensational. Mm -hmm. I kind of wish I could have redone that last line, but I, was, I wasn't I was sure how quick it was going to fucking scroll through. I, I don't know if I should contact Khan Will! if you'd be willing to read the lines for the edits. <laughs> oh my god, that's too much work. You're fine. You're, it wasn't bad. Yeah, we're good. Mm -hmm. Uh, so, mm -hmm. we're actually gonna- we're not gonna look at the notes for this really quickly. We're gonna look for episode 6's really quickly for something. Uh, something that I wanted to show a little, little smidgen of a while ago. Is it the witch side or is it the- Uh, it's the, it's it's the, the witch side. side. No, wait, oh, Human? yeah, never mind, here we go, yeah. Oh, yeah. So, this is what happens when you kill Erica, fell from a pleasure boat and currently missing. Due to the Rokenjima explosion accident! Mm -hmm. They tell you this the episode before! Wait, so wait, the explosion the notes, happened... So, yeah, if you go over and you execute Erica on the, on the character notes for this chapter, or for, for chapter 6, not even chapter 7, chapter 6, it specifically mentions the Rokenjima explosion accident. Wait... Did did they mention the bombs in episode six? No, 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 no. Nope. Oh, no. Oh, that's yeah, a it... mistake. Yeah, man. I can't no, believe that she would put spoilers for his own you could work only, with, you in his own work. You can only execute her after you finish the episode. Yeah. Yeah. Although I will say, fun fact: um, if you go to the witch side and you execute her, she just fucking vanishes. Yeah, she yeah. gone. Because she no, got, she gee, got sent back to the abyss. Got fired or she just yeah, fucking gone. Makes sense. She can't but, be killed. So did she mm -hmm. die before she got there? I I might have misread that. Uh, did she die on the on the island? Oh, here we can just kind of go back. So, uh, at least here, fuck. I think it's just says the deal. She fell, from, she, she fell from a pleasure boat and is currently missing. Due to the Rokenjima explosion accident that occurred shortly after her, after her own accident was lost to history. Her family argues that she might have been drifted to Rokenjima and gotten involved in the accident, but no evidence has indicated her presence on the island has been found at the scene. Forgers who learn of her fall from the boat often theorize that she drifted onto Rokenjima and add her into the witch illusion. Oh, that... Ooh. Forgers? Forgers. I yeah, like the coffee. Mm -hmm. You know, like, like the like the like the spy X families. The, the people who make like the fan fiction of mm -hmm. the uh, Rakuten uh, disaster, like uh, like Itoi Kukuro, or uh, I guess Featherin's human counterpart. Okay, so... I didn't know that that was what they were called. Did they mention that? Yes. Yeah, Ooh, that. look at me and my husband. Well, so okay, so that's uh, the image we used that for a while. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. AC, it's been yeah. actually pretty decent to be married to you for this long. <laughs> you know, people will be surprised. Nass is the person who isn't even in the relation. My man, my man's just jealous because he ain't gonna get some ever. Mm -hmm. <laughs> just like Anyways, the married uh, that get ready for the get ready for the ACB divorce arc after this. <laughs> oh no, don't what? play that! No, don't no, play no, that no, at no, all! No, 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 no! no, no, no. Oh, uh, shall I you can't let me visit on Christmas? No, right? no. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't this opening fine? Uh, well, no. Here's the thing. It's it's actual. It's random. It will either play the the hyper spoiler yeah, but... one or the current one. But at I, this point, the is there a, a real... there's still spoiler. shit? There's still shit. It spoils the there's... entire fucking chapter. Are yeah. Sh yes. They show us. A, I remember. Yeah. Mm -hmm. One hundred percent. Okay. All right, so do, should I go over notes, or are you guys to be? Uh, not... hold on, fucking yeah, get that shit out of here. No, 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 don't do that. Much like Maria in like episode like most of them, I am to be. Mm. Wow. To be, to be honest, I thought I was pretty succinct. I don't know what needs to be qualified on that one. I mean, like, do you guys have any like re like general reactions, stuff you want to like talk about? Uh, I mean, if I can take like one thing out of the notes I wrote down, it's I'm wondering if this, if the last ending will be like a Leon survives ending, like a uh, I'm not sure about the family survives, but the Leon would be one of the final survivors. I still think the fix it thing has to be everybody lives. 
Mm. Yeah, I'm not sure if everybody's going to live or not, but there is like a common thing about Miracle. What was Willard's original plan? What was his original goal? Uh, he was just he's a, he's a witch hunter. I told you. Oh, did you retired? Yeah, he was retired. Well, he was just a few days from retirement. Mm -hmm. Oh wait, so it's just witch hunting that was his thing, though. Pretty much, yeah. That well, was just. Well, no, no, so, well, not exactly. He's, he's got a sim. He has a similar job to Knox. Witch Hunter is like the designation, the name of the job. Yeah. Okay. I think it seems like, like now his current goal is to get a happy ending. So I'm wondering if there will be a thing that can cut through red truths. Hmm. I mean, Mather did it that one time. Did he? Yeah, with the wasn't that a red truth he did with the, the gold golden thing. truth mm -hmm. thing? Yeah. Did he cut the through game master of that? ruling? I'm pretty sure. I forget when he. I forget uh, the golden of truth. Reason. The golden <laughs> truth is to put it succinctly. It is on par with the red truth and can be stronger or weaker than it. But the bigger thing is that uh, the, the game only the game master can say it, and it is absolutely one hundred percent the truth. Like you don't have to prove it either. All right then. So uh, maybe there'll be a gold truth that will like kind of uh, fuck up that red truth that Burn Castle threw out. It's it's the referee going fuck off. Mm -hmm. <laughs> technical, technical foul. I mean, I feel like that's how it has to go. It has to be a golden truth, or else. I mean, like, it, it's, it it's happens. More, it's more like the omnipotent referee who already knows how the game is going to end. <laughs> I will. Yes, just like that one game. This family sucks. Yeah, it does. Outside of like the few of those characters, this family sucks. Just like the Vanderbilts. Oh. I don't know who that is. Oh, all right. Yeah, yeah, all right, dude. All right. Unless anybody has any parting remarks they want to make, we're going to go ahead and wrap things up. Uh, thank you all very much for, for, for stage. Thank you all very much for sticking around for this extra long uh, thing. Uh, really, really good job around uh, a metaphorical round of applause. Uh, we, I'm not <laughs> golf, sure if you want to start golf, fucking. Golf. Yeah, you know what? Here, finger snaps. My Willard body pillow is now on the yeah, way yeah. from Amazon. <laughs> Wait, that one still has the spot though. It's missing an arm. Why is that? Willard is very poggers. All right. Good oh. night, everybody. Bye-bye. Good night. Bye -bye. Good night. Good night.